how do you know that you're raising a small okay, let's, let's, let's take a look at this uh, article here. Five signs. You're raising a highly spoiled kid, and our parents cannot do it. Okay, let's, let's unpack these signs. Okay, number one, not taking no for an answer. A kid expects to get things their way and actually does. In fact, they're the ones constantly telling you no. I told my mom no once. <laughs> 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 once. <laughs> I learned my lesson pretty fast, man. No, yeah, I, I think, I think uh, the big reason today that a lot of kids have pushback or lack of respect for authority because they lack of respect for their parents. And so even I, I've, got, I've got a three-year-old. Tomorrow is going to be four. He loves to say no. Mine, no. i got to be firm with him. I said share, right? Listen, pay attention. When I call your name, you pay attention. i got to keep reminding this kid. Uh, and by the way, I have four of my kids, all different. I have a 28-year-old son, twins that are 21, JoJo's 12, and now three turning four years old. All Different personalities. Jojo, when I tell him something, one time, nothing. There's no pushback, nothing. Listens, honors. Uh, Jordan, sure, he's a, to he's a toddler. Right? Uh, number two, being more into receiving than giving. That's why I'm not a big fan of Christmas in terms of just giving gifts for the sake of giving, giving gifts. Mm. Right? It's a season for giving, sure. But sometimes people validate themselves by the abundance of gifts they give to their kids. Like, I got to give my kids everything. For example, I got to give my kids everything that I didn't have. Okay? You ever hear that? You ever hear yeah, that statement? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But if you want them to live a life differently than you, do you really want to rob them of not, for example, the grit, the grind, mm. the appreciation for the small things? Yeah. Are you sure you don't want your kids to go through the tough times as much as you, as a parent, are going through tough times? Think about that. You're, you're about to be a dad one day. Long, maybe a long time from now, maybe a short time from now. I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on giving your kids everything you had? Uh, because you know how hard you grew up with. Yeah. Because okay. I got my opinion on this. No, yeah, definitely. I, I, I want my kids to understand. Here's the thing. I, I want my kids to be able to know that they have a, a father figure in, in, in the household and know that they can have someone that's going to lead them towards the right direction. Someone that is going to be in their corner for every single stage of their life. You know, the first decade, the second decade, third, fourth decade of their lives. All right, your first breakup. All right, your first girlfriend. All right, she dumped you. All right, your first kid, your first job, your first interview. I, I want them to know that, that no matter what happens, that's going to be in their corner. But when it comes down to the petty stuff, like the gift giving, and when it comes down to, you know, just little tantrums that kids nowadays throw, even when you're a pre you know, a preteen or a young, a young adult still living at home, I want them to understand that life is not going to come easy. Everything that I'm going to do is going to be built around a system that I know is going to work based off of fathers that I'm already affiliated with, like, mm -hmm. for example, yourself and other people that I've seen work on their kids or on a psychological basis. What's going to work that's going to help them, you know, um, uh, absorb the information that they need to know, like, all right, life is not going to be easy. I'm being prepared for life and life is happening for me and not to me. And just because it's the no right now, it doesn't mean that it's, not gonna, it's gonna be a no forever. Yep. You know, for example, you know, my, my, my kids uh, were raised in good neighborhoods and went to schools I never went to school with, so that's what I wanted to provide them. But I, ha I wanted this one word forever to be ingrained in their brain, which is the word earn, not entitled, earn. You know, even for the 16th birthday, they, 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 uh, they had their friends all get brand new cars. Parents were giving them BMWs. Parents were giving them this, this, and that. I said, listen, kids, if your currency with me is reading and grades, you may not get that that car. And by the way, they honored it. They, they honored the, the fact that they need to do certain things. Um, I'm not a big fan of, of, of overwhelming the kids with gifts uh, for, for the holidays, for the sake of just giving gifts. Um, here's why. Who put all the time and effort into giving that kid a gift? The kid receiving the gift or the parent working for it? Parent working for it, right? 1,000%. And then, and then why do you get upset when the kids have the gift that you gave them it's laying around the house, and you're like, pick it up, put your toys away. Why, why do you care? It's their toy. Because you put the time and effort into it. You wrapped it with love. You put it on the Christmas tree. You, you, you went out of your way to buy this gift, to be thoughtful enough to buy them this gift, and they don't appreciate it. You know why? Because they didn't earn it. And so majority of things that you get for free in life, you don't value. You're not going to value it. And so it's earned. Earned all the way. Why? Because when you get what it is that you want, well, guess what? You value it. We're going to appreciate it a lot the, more. The, the, the taste of earning something, the taste of reaching a goal because you fought for it, you worked hard for it, is invaluable and it adds and builds your character. Uh, the third thing, demanding things ASAP. They don't consider that other people may be inconvenienced by their request. Mm. Expect you to set your priorities aside and cater to them. Boom. Nothing else matters but what I want. Woo! That's a, that's a spoiled freaking brat. 
right? Number four, only think about themselves. They feel entitled and expect special favors and another kid, class gets an MVP sticker, they get upset and say, I deserve it more. How many, how many times, Milton, have you seen somebody get a job and they want a promotion and next, you know, somebody comes in, they kick their tail at that job and they get the promotion? Remove all politics aside. Forget the fact that they, the person that hired them may be re related to them. Mm -hmm. The person that hired them may have went to the same college as them. Put all politics aside. Somebody comes in after you they hustle, they do the job, they get promoted for you. How does, some per, how does a person feel? By the way, I like, I like being the person that comes in out of nowhere and kicks everybody's ass. That's what you did, right? That's, 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 that's exactly what you did. I made, my, I made a living doing that, man. Yeah. Just proving people wrong. I don't care how long you've been here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a way to control my destiny and get promoted, earn the job, earn the spot, get paid more than you have even though you've been here longer than I have. Big reason? Because mom and dad gave me nothing. I mean, we had a 13-inch black and white TV growing up, and I was the remote control. <laughs> Having to get up and change it yourself every time. And I was the antenna. It was a whole thing. Having to know, sit know, there while the family watches the show the entire time. <laughs> antenna. And so I, I think a lot of that, when I, when I watch these kids uh, play sports in, in, in the youth, uh, uh, leagues, and hearing some of these parents talk at schools, soft, man, soft. You know, wh what, do you, what do you think about these participation trophies? You lose, but you still get a trophy. Full of crap, man. They, they started doing that when I was in high school. Oh, my gosh. One of the worst ideas you could possibly do to a kid. And you know what? This list that you're listing out, man, I, I see a lot of narcissism coming out of this when they're adults, especially in relationships, demanding things on, uh, things ASAP, on demand, only thinking about yourself and not, and not others, receiving but not, not being able to give and not being gra grateful for what you receive and not knowing how to take a no. That sounds very narcissistic, becoming a very narcissistic man or woman when you grow up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And by the way, I do believe in a, in a season of selfishness. Mm -hmm. It was kind of odd for, for me to even say this, for you to even hear it. But I think unless you take care of yourself first, you got to get yourself squared away. You know, I was, I was, I was telling my kids, I said, no, uh, they're like, uh, how do you know you're ready for a relationship? I said, do you know what being single is? And they're like, yeah, being 100%. I said, exactly. 100% you're single. You're whole. You're one. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why? Because if God is a God of multiplication, Right? What, 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 so what does scripture say? One can set flight to, to, to 1,000, but two can set flight to 10,000. So in other words, God is a God of multiplication, exponential multiplication. That, that, that's my framing of, of being in a relationship. So therefore, you can multiply, not just have sex, not just live together, save Correct. money on, on finances. But you, when you're looking for somebody to be in a relationship with, it's to multiply you, your, your dream, your purpose. And so I told the kids, if you... If you if you multiply yourself one, your whole, your 100% times one. So one times one is one. But if you're not whole, you're not 100%, let's say you're 0.5. Let's say you're 50%. Guess what you're naturally going to attract? You're going to attract 100%ers or you're going to attract other 50%ers? Mm -hmm. You're going to attract other 50%ers. So 50% times 50% is 25%. So in other words, you together is actually worse from a numerical and mathematical standpoint. So you got to build yourself up, be selfish for a minute, get yourself squared away in your values and your principles, some of the things that uh, you, you believe in, and then you're going to attract that type of person. I mean, listen, the moment uh, Sheena and I, mean, we talked about it last podcast, uh, Sheena and I, we don't argue about money. We've never argued about money. Like, we don't have money today because we've been broke. We've been many times not uh, uh, in a right financial position, but we've never argued about money. Why? Because you say, hey, babe, we want to build a family. When we're, we want to raise some great kids. We want our kids to have an impact in, in, in this world, an impact in society. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.